Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Isle of Man in the UK. This is John and Mike's MMA Corner. Okay, I'm joined with Kerry Hughes right now, who also has a best friend at present, so if you do hear swearing or profanity, just expect it. There'll be shit being said. Uh, Kerry, look, you're fighting on BCMA card. You're fighting Clement Sh- uh, Schreiber. I want to say Schreiber. Is it Schreiber, we'll say? She's Belgian, but I'm, gonna say, I'm trying to say Schreiber. That's the German pronunciation, Schreiber. Well, we'll do Schreiber. That's what we'll do. It's, uh, I'm, I'm not fluent in anything other than bullshit. So, look... <laughs> The fight itself, I have to say, uh, let's take let's take away from the fight. Firstly, you're on like a little fitness mission at the moment because you're looking like a lean, mean, absolute John Jones machine at the moment. The way you've been training, um, what what kind of stemmed this kind of focus into the the conditioning side of things? That I, I, I've seen you fight before, but this looks like you you kind of went to level uh, Kerry Hughes 2.0. Oh, I thank you very much. Um, what's that? All it is really. I stepped away from ty- from um, MMA for a while and I was injured and I kind of started hitting the weights a bit more and things while I was waiting for my knee to heal up Yeah. and I actually really fell in love with it but then when I've come back to fighting my MMA coach Steve Byrne has also become my conditioning coach now as well so what I've got in, a, in that sense I'm really lucky because I've got someone overseeing the whole fight side of things but also the conditioning side as well and then I've got like a really top level nutritionist I'm working with and it's just a case of wanting to be the absolute I suppose the best I can be at this weight and it was a case of I was coming in every time I weigh in I weigh in in a bit better shape carrying a bit more muscle you know a bit less body fat and this time around I think I seem to have hit the balance pretty well like I don't I don't think I can really put any more muscle size or drop much more body fat so I think I've sort of found where I need to be I was going to say because there is a kind of fine line because if you go too much on the muscular side then you need more oxygen for the muscle there's a risk of you know gassing out so to speak and that that fat that human bodies have that is an energy source it is also a little bit of it is a bit slight bit of padding and, and armor so it is something you had the balance when you got into the weights, when you went back to MMA, did you find it a little bit tiring because of the muscle you'd put on? No, not really. I mean, I went back to Muay Thai first of all, and obviously I found it a bit gassy at first because I hadn't been able to do any cardio of any sort really for coming up for six months by the time I went back. But your body remembers things pretty well. To be honest with you, I'm doing a lot more cardio now than I ever have. Like, my best mate's into running, he's got me doing them park run things. I started swimming. You know, it's, if, if anything, I'd suggest that my, yeah, my cardio side of things is probably better than it's ever been as well, which is quite nice. And again, it's, it's just sort of finding that balance. Like, yeah, I'm carrying a lot of muscle, but it's functional muscle. And all the running and everything else is trying to make sure that I'm at the right level of fitness for it. I was going to say there would be profanity and there you go Kerry said the word cardio the C word it's, very, it's a very dirty word <laughs> I was say it's just a filthy mouth I've got there <laughs> um, yeah I was, I was going to say because obviously with the nutritionist that makes a big difference and, and you're right because if you're filling yourself with dominoes you're not exactly going to be performing at your best but then again if you just eat salad you're still missing out some certain nutrients and, and certain certain foods I suppose having that nutritionist kind of helps guide you especially with meal size like kind of portion sizes is what catch people out I think people think they can eat the right food but it's all about the portion sizes because if you have chicken a whole chicken breast and rice a big bag of rice every day uh, five times a day it's, it's too much calories you know it is it isn't easy to get it right it's very tough did you find that when he helped you out your nutritionist that there was things that kind of made you go, that's where I went wrong with some things? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he, he really knows his stuff. And, was, you know, the first time I went for a cup in was for my um, fight out in Germany. And there was a lot of trial and error at first. And just things I, di- I didn't really know at all about, like, finding someone's maintenance calories and then sort of dropping from there and things like that. I mean, there's a lot of things that... I've been doing like even with this cut every time my weight stagnates so every week um, he advocates having like a reset meal or a cheat meal sort of thing so try and reset 
um, certain hormones within your body and stuff like that. If you told me before that like a week out from a fight I'd be sat there like eating pancakes and chocolate to to reset my body, I'd have been like, this is the best day ever. <laughs> um, but it, you know, it does seem to work. He he's definitely knows what he's doing and he's very talented. Yeah. But again, it's in terms of energy levels because every time I've come into these kind of weight cuts before, I tend to find there's a certain point, usually about now, where I'm flagging and I'm tired and I'm you know half fast in my training and things like that. Where this time round, I'm probably as light as I've ever been at this stage, if not more so. But I'm I'm still training hard, like I'm still feeling I've got energy. I'm still able to be moderately civilized and polite company, <laughs> as far as I ever am able to, you know. And for me, like that's a big part of it. Like I'm not walking around listless with no energy. No, that's good because it is one of them times when when it comes to fight week, everyone who's not fighting gets excited, but everyone who's fighting. You know, like you say, you just you just going through the motions. You just you just wanting to get to that fight day just so you can get it out of the way because that final week is the shitty bit. Um, I find a lot of fighters uh, are starting to realise they need to get closer to their weight, their weight class that they're going to fight at. They need to be a little bit lighter all year round, so to speak, just to have make things a bit easier. Because especially in fight camp, rather than worrying about the weight, you can more focus on technique, uh, and that way there's there's less stress on the mind coming up to the fight uh, fight day. Oh, 100%. Like, every single time I fight, I, I walk around a bit lighter and a bit leaner afterwards. Like, you know, if you consider that my last MMA fight was a couple of years ago, I cut from 75 to 61 for that. Like, this time around, I didn't hit any higher than about 67.5. And, you know, walking around a lot leaner and things, it definitely makes it a lot more of a pleasant experience. You know, it takes away a big part of the worry. It's just all around, it's healthier. Like, I don't really like to cut water because yeah, it's different for different people. Some people would rather cut water than diet for ages, but for me, I just react really badly to it. And I'd rather have a few, you know, a, sorry, a few weeks of hard dieting than like, being really careful what I eat than I would sitting there baking in a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sauna thing, people still don't realise they need to stop doing the saunas. I don't understand why you, you can cut water in a much safer environment but it, hey look the sport's still young people are still learning their ways uh, look the, the fact that the fight is it's, it's got a, a title fight on the line does that matter to you your main event title fight etc main card does that matter to you all does it kind of, kind of play on your mind at all or are you just interested more in the, the fight because like you say it's been a while since you've, you got back in there not because of your own fault, because of, you know, the fights felt cancelled bouts, etc. You know, what happens. Um, is it just one of the cases where you want to get the fight in? This is more it's more a case of the fight than what the reward is. I think because I, I genuinely, turned up, did not realise this was a title fight. And about, I think it was about three or four weeks ago, I asked Jack, because I said it on one of the posters, and I was like, oh, is it a title? He was like, yeah. I was like, oh, fair enough. Like, it, it's largely irrelevant. The, the important thing to me, I mean, what, I, what, what is really nice is coming back to main event, a show that I sort of originally fought on the undercut for, mm. and it's in my hometown. Like, my last few fights have been Newcastle, Germany, Cornwall. Like, there were, you know, the cancelled ones were due to be done in Newcastle. Like, I've not really had the opportunity to have much in the way of like support and people there. So for me, obviously, I'm, I'm not a girl, go, but I live here. Like, this is where a lot of my friends and family are, you know, so for me, it's good cause I've got, like, a big crowd of people come in. It's just nice to have that, there. and it's nice for, you know, it's nice for me dad to be able to come watch stuff like that. Um, and from, from my perspective, anyway, like, it's really good to be able to go out there, like, instead of everyone being against you for once, people should be like, <laughs> yeah, home favourite, rather than <laughs> booing you because like, you're the only person there they've never seen before. See, I, I was thinking because I always fight across. I never, uh, we don't have events here, so I was always thinking of changing my like having a fighter name. I've uh, called Boo, so every time people I come out, they, I think they're just chanting my name. 
That was why. No, I, not a bad plan, to be fair. Yeah, I thought it was a good idea because then I'd be like, yeah, they're loving me. You know, it's the only way I can think about it. You know, I, I thought when I fought in Wales, I put Tom Jones on as my walkout music because I thought I'll get the crowd on my side, get a bit of Tom in. Can't go wrong with a bit of Tom Jones. They loved it. Absolutely loved it. They did. Well, I, you know, it's. Oh, I'll, I'll, I, I'll play to the crowd. I don't care. It's a bit of a crack for me doing that whole walkout thing. And when they cheer and boo and. And you, you, you don't really notice it that much when you're fighting. It's 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 crazy, you know. The noise that they make, it, it just it's drowned out by what you're doing. The focus you have, it's it's surreal. So yeah, you, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's 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 an experience that's hard to put into perspective for someone who's never. If someone's never done it before, they wouldn't ever understand unless they've been in there. Your opponent, though, she, she's a girl who obviously will be seen as the, the away team, let's say. Uh, but her, her, her fighter sta- uh, style herself, I think she's you know she's got good she's got a good jab, good bit of boxing, like, like good bit of clinch work. Uh, from your perspective, looking at her and watching her, is there anything about her you've been keeping an eye out for that you feel sees her strength? Let's not talk about weaknesses because that might give away anything particularly noticed. But you know, let's compliment her in a way. Let's is there any strengths that you've been kind of thinking? Okay, yeah, she has got good boxing or she has got good this. You've obviously looked at her more than I have, if you know that much. Um, I don't really tend to sort of look at my opponents for how I'm going to fight my fight. Yeah. Like, I've done a lot of training around areas that I felt like I wanted to improve. Mm. You know, there's areas where I felt like I was quite happy and where I was performing, where I've gone out and, you know, tried to polish those up and everything else. But in terms of what she's got, it's largely irrelevant because, you know, I'm not going to go out there with a game plan because since my last fight, I've very much changed the way that I fight, I've changed the way I do things. And I will presume that she has as well. So if you go out there with a game plan, like, oh yeah, she loves to jab or she loves to get whatever else, and then that doesn't happen, I think sometimes that can be a bit of a, like, a confidence issue. It kind of rocks people. Whereas if you go out there and just think, you know what, I'm a fighter, like whatever sport, that's my entire MA, I'm a fighter, that's what I'm here to do. I'll go in there, I'll see what happens. Whatever happens, I'll react to it and I'll get the job done. Yeah, it's it's a case of yeah, just in the moment. As long as you train for having reactions for kind of almost every kind of scenario that can happen, it's impossible almost to drill every scenario. But if you if you drilled yourself to counter a, a, a jab and a, a one two and a one a one two three like a hook at the end, and you've learned counters how to counter this, and you've drilled it into your body, that muscle memory kicks in. That's what you'll rely on in the fight. It's it's not really kind of hoping she does it if she does do something then you've got that reaction in there to naturally stop it exactly and do you know what like, I train day in day out with some really good, you know good level guys like I'm really lucky that as minute BKK seems to be full of midgets as well so there's a load of people my size <laughs> which is pretty much unheard of like other fight camps I've had the next lightest person has been sort of 70 kilos fighters who are certainly not walking around at that <laughs> like it's really nice at the minute like Kyle's fighting the show he's a bantamweight we've got a couple of flyweights knocking about a couple of featherweights and f- yeah for me personally that's great because I've got like a nice variety of people I can spar with and you know they're not ridiculously stronger than me or ridiculously heavier yes but if, you, if you're training across a variety of people that have different strengths then hopefully you know naturally you'll start to be, be prepared for every scenario. Oh, yeah. Like a boy scout. Yeah, it does. I was going to say, have you just been with BKK training at the moment or did you venture elsewhere, do a bit of cross training over gyms maybe just to get a bit of a different taste to different fighters? I mean, I, tr- I fight out of two gyms anyway, uh, BKK and Progressive Martial Arts, Semtex Essex out in the South End. So I've been training between those two gyms. Obviously, I was over at Syndicate in Vegas towards the beginning of the year. Uh, I took a lot from that in terms of just techniques and in terms of, again, it's just pretty cool to grapple with some of the guys there. Even, I mean, even their amateur wrestlers are just on a ridiculous level. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so I trained down at Semtex in Kent, especially when I've got a fight coming up, the sparring and things like that. You know, that's a, a brilliant place full of people that are, you know, really push you and challenge you. So I don't cross train in the sense of just training anywhere, but all of those gyms are affiliated with BKK. So 
it's um it's a pretty cool way of going about things yeah yeah definitely it'll certainly help you absolutely you know if you've got twice as many options when it comes to sparring you're laughing really because then you're not going to be short of people to, to, to kind of help sharpen your skill set and that's the thing about the game it it's always evolving you know you're never like you said you're, you've changed since your last fight to this fight and you'll probably change after this fight for your next one you, you'll slot you tweak you keep tweaking you keep tweaking you keep because you never get it perfect you just keep aiming for that perfection and that's the idea of it and I'm sure you feel that way I'm sure you're just trying to keep going and trying to keep evolving yeah, I think the point is, uh, I think at the point where you stop trying to improve or stop trying to evolve or decide that what you've got is good enough, that that's the point where you sort of, you know, obviously, number one, you've obviously lost the hunger for the fighting and the training and everything else, but number two, the point where you become easy to beat because if, you're, if you've decided that what you do is good enough and you're going to sit on it and you're not going to change that, then you're not going to surprise anyone. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, you, you've got to... Be prepared. Like, look, Cain Velasquez doing a spinning wheel kick. That was awesome. That was pretty awesome. And it was really good technique. <laughs> like, really good. I thought, if he was fighting someone who has a normal height, not six foot eight, that would have been a l- f- sweet move. That would have been awesome. But, uh, it again, it just shows that you guys are doing stuff and girls doing stuff in the gyms. It, they're just drilling stuff and getting the confidence to actually throw it in the fight. And that's all it is. It's just getting that confidence from transferring from the... F- from the training ground to the fight and that's yeah. that's all it is is getting that confidence and when you throw it enough times and you feel it's it's doing the damage it should be then you'll start to throw it. and I'm sure that you're, you're in that same place where not just with strikes maybe submission techniques or sweeps or anything like that even transitions from a double leg to a single it's you probably just got to keep drilling it until you get that confidence in the fight you'll do it because you know you're probably going to get it pretty much 99% of the time well exactly yeah it's all about confidence. Big factor is confidence. And look, okay, I can't wait for the BKK uh, fighters to get on the show. I can't wait for BCMMA to actually have the card on. Uh, they always put an uh, awesome fight card together, to be fair. And I got a lot of ladies on, which is always a good thing. Uh, my eyes don't mind that. And because uh, from a technical standpoint, and you've got yourself fighting on the main event, fighting for a title. So whoop whoop, nice little bit of jewelry on offer. Now look, t- ladies and gentlemen. If you are in the area, if you're in like England, let's say, that'll do. Get down to the event now if it isn't already sold out. If it is sold out, I hope they're streaming it. I actually need to check uh, with Jack about that and see if they're streaming it this time. They are streaming it live and free, although I don't know the broadcast. Is it MMA yet. TV? I think it might be MMA TV. They did it last time. If they're not, I'll get someone who's going to be there. Yeah, Periscope. Nice. I'll get someone to Periscope it for everyone. But yeah, they, they, they start doing the streaming, which is awesome, which is great because I'm not in England. So it's mega for me to go and just sit on my backside and watch. So I'll be able to tune yeah, in. Over there. We, well, I say we got internet. We get allocated a, a, a 30 minutes a week internet each person. <laughs> and then the government puts back in the coal mine. They're, they're good, they're good, uh, that's they're, good. Right. That's they're good. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's my 30 minutes of, you know, daylight. It's beautiful. Uh, look, Kerry, I can't wait to see the, the card itself go down. Look forward to seeing you back in the cage. I know when watching you last time, a Super Saturday card, that was mega. But look, and that's going wild. That's going, that feels like a long time ago, that. And that was an awesome weekend, that fight card. But, Kerry, what's your social media for people to jump onto, give you a follow, and actually check out your ridiculous conditioning that you're in? Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I'm Rocksteady MMA, um, obviously the nickname, across Twitter and um, Instagram, AFC Angel on Snapchat, and obviously Kerry Hughes on Facebook. Look me up. Now, be careful on a Snapchat, folks. Don't be sending silly, rude pictures, okay? Yeah, like you. Stop sending me those. It's I, really offensive. Well, Mike keeps saying you'll like it, so I keep taking a picture of his because, you know, he can't see over his over his belly but <laughs> right, he's not here so it's fine uh, <laughs> and what about uh, any sponsors Kerry helping you out and supporting you yeah I'm really lucky like Stephen Byerly he's, my, he's also my MMA coach but he like, does all my strength and conditioning and everything looks after me really well um, Lockdown Fightwear who by the way definitely worth checking out like they're a really really good kit and they uh, they do 
they do look after me. Really good leggings. I like them. Hard to check um, them out, yeah. I love the leggings. Yeah, that's it for me and sponsors at the minute. So uh, if anyone wants to jump on the bandwagon and help out with the next one, that'd be awesome. Yeah, Nike. Um, we'd also, to be honest, you like to say thanks ever so much to like everyone at BKK, mm-hmm. obviously Steve and Jack especially. Um, Jez and all the guys at Progressive and Semtex, you know, thanks to everyone who's taken the time to come in. Like, I work really strange shifts and stuff like that, <laughs> and a lot of the guys have taken time out to come and help me with extra drilling and things like that. It's really appreciated. Um, and then, obviously, all the guys and girls at Anytime Fitness who do all my conditioning stuff with me and, like, come along to random things like swimming, Alex for dragging me out to the park runs and burning my house down and all the other stuff he does on a daily basis <laughs> and then just thank you also to the I think it's about 70, 80 people have had tickets off me now to come and watch live um, it's going to be a really good night let's all get pissed afterwards eh? <laughs> <laughs> look Gary have a great show. actually sorry I should also say thank you to my opponent because I don't know if you know I'm sure you're aware I was originally meant yes. to be fighting Stephanie Page yes Whatever it happened, happened last week. I got a message saying that she'd pulled out due to undisclosed personal reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, this chick stepped up and taken the fight, and I'm really grateful to her because I'd have been absolutely devastated if it had been called off. So thank you very much. I'm still going to punch you in the face, but thank you. Yeah, yeah. Kudos to her if having you know stepping up with the, having the balls to step. Well, hopefully she hasn't got them, but happen having the metaphorical balls to step in short notice. Uh, again, Kerry, have a great fight. Have a great weekend. Have a great time. Uh, at the event and I have a I hope all your friends and family have a good time with you and have a sore head on Sunday morning them lot I mean from drinking ale <laughs> wonderful listen thanks ever so much it's always good to talk with you guys